Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of High on Rugs. Today we are going to be making a Cult of the Lamb rug. Cult of the Lamb is a fun little indie game where you start a little cult in the woods with animal followers, some of which have the trait of being a coprophiliac, which means they like to eat poop, and occasionally they might ask you for a nice hearty bowl of poop. So the rug we're going to be making today is the lamb handing over a bowl of poop to one lucky coprophiliac villager. And so I started off by doing a little doodle with pencil and then pen and then marker and that's what I'm going to go off of as my reference. So I'm laying out my tufting cloth and I'm spreading it out and I'm measuring about 3 feet 2 inches which is roughly 100 centimeters. Somebody asked me last time what the centimeters were so I did a little uh, conversion and basically 100 because my frame is 3 feet by 3 feet and I want a little bit of overhang just so the cloth doesn't fray too much and the whole thing will fall apart. So a little bit of overhang, measuring it out, and then cutting out my square. Trying hard not to take a piece of wood to the butt. But accidents happen in the workshop. And then I'm beginning to hang my tufting cloth onto the frame and pulling all the way around, around and around until I get it tight as a drum. Until it is tight, tight, tight. Tight, 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 yeah! Tuco Salamanca approved. And then I'm hooking up the laptop with my image to the projector and getting it so it's nice and centered as possible and we can begin tracing our design. I just use regular Sharpie markers. They work really nicely on the tuft and cloth. However, they do start to dry out uh, more quickly than they usually would. But that's just kind of a sacrifice I need to make. And the drawing actually took probably close to 20 to 25 minutes. When I drew the original design, I didn't think it was that detailed. And then as I started working on it, I was like, wow, there actually is a lot of detail packed in here for just these cute, two cute little characters. So it's by far my most detailed rug I've done thus far. And then the light comes on and we see our design and just a little transition to you can see I colored it in kind of scribbly but just to give myself a reference of what color is going to go where and then we can begin tufting and as always I like my line work nice dark lines and uh, what better place to start than the black outline the black outline itself probably took the most time of anything. You can see I did those thick black lines around both the characters. One line with the tufting gun just isn't going to cut it for those really thick lines, so I had to go through after I've outlined everything and do about two, three lines thick all the way around. So you can imagine it took quite a while. Slowly but surely, we're working our way all the way around. I should also mention that I only really have... I work full-time. I work about six days a week, 45 hours or so a week. So I, my schedule is pretty busy. Um, so I really only, for the most part, have one day a week to work on these things. So I started working on this project at about 5.30 in the morning. I never wake up that early, but... I think just the excitement of having time to work on my next project uh, got the better of me and I just kind of woke up at like 5.15 and got right to it. So if you see the back of my head and my hair's all messed up, that's why I just jumped right out of bed, right into the garage and started going at it. Plus with not that much time to work on these things, I need as much time as possible. So rising early is a big help for that. And you can see from the opposite side, when it's just the black lines, everything looks super blown out and crazy. 
but as the other colors get added, they push the black out of the way, they thin out those lines a little bit, and it all starts to take shape. I made sure I spent a lot of time on the eyeballs, because that's probably the most important part. As they say, the eyes are the windows to the soul. And if both of their eyes looked bad, then the whole thing would kind of look bad. And they, they're... I wouldn't say they're perfect, but they are good enough. They're quite circular, maybe a little octangular, but from the other side they look pretty good. And there's me just showing the opposite side where everything is super blown out and it just, it looks insane. But finally, all the black lines have been filled in and it's time to start on the white. Just doing tiny little lines all the way around the top of the lamb's head, down and around to his bottom jaw. And I chose white for the first um, color to fill in because I figured that there was the most of that. But as I started going through it, I got done with it pretty quickly and I was like, oh, I guess there was not as much white as I originally thought there was. Basically just around the lamb's head, the little triangle on the bunny rabbit's robe, and a few other little bits and pieces like the shading of the eyes and the pupils. And of course the stripe on the lamb's cape. And the highlight on the bell. So there is a few things. But doing the white went relatively quickly. And there we go, that's all four eyeballs completely finished. And here's this nice golden color that I'm using for the shadow part of his circular spherical bell. And that was all I needed was those two little lines. Didn't even bother putting it onto a spool. And now we're filling in the bell. Wanted to make sure it would look nice and detailed, so I added the white shine, the shadow, and then the rest of it's just yellow. And already we're on to the red. Luckily both of their outfits are red, so I can use the red for the lamb's cape, or his poncho, whatever you want to call it. It looks like a cape to me that kind of wraps all the way around. And some red for his horns, and red for the eyeball on his hat. It's all about the eyes. The other thing I paid real close attention to was the eyeball on his hat. I wanted to make sure that the pupil was the right shape, and that it had a nice eyeball shape to it. And then just a little bit of pink in the bunny rabbit's ears. Now if you've played this game, you will know that there are probably close to 40 different kinds of followers, like different animals and monsters and stuff like that. I went with the bunny rabbit just because I think he's adorable and I wanted to, you know, make this rug a little demented but also cute at the same time, which I think is pretty much the aesthetic of that whole game. And so I went with the bunny rabbit. If I had a regret, it would be one, putting these yellow lines in the bowl. I wanted to make it look like it was banana leaves. Um, if I could go back, I would have done a, a lighter shade of green. Just I feel like it would um, blend in with the darker green a little better. And the other regret would be making both the characters gray. It saved me a little bit of time, but I think it maybe it would have been a little cooler if the bunny was like blue or... Uh, purple or orange, I don't know. You can make them any color in the game, so. But I went with gray. And I guess it's cool that they match. 
So now we're onto the gray and I'm just filling in the legs and you can see the lamb's hands over there have been filled in. And then here's a nice little time lapse of filling in the lamb's face and you can see it really start to take shape here. I like doing these little time lapses. I really wish I could work this quickly in real life, but it takes quite a while. A lot of patience. The most frustrating part to me of tufting rugs is when your thread inexplicably pulls out of the gun. You know, I feel like I have a pretty good feeding system going on. And just every once in a while the thread's like, goodbye, and it pulls out of the gun, so you gotta bring it over, lay the gun down, grab your thread, thre thread it back through, which is a whole process. It doesn't take a while, but it just gets very frustrating. And so those are the two characters done, and we're working on a border. I wanted to make sure I made this rug square. It was gonna save me a lot of time in the uh, finishing process. And just make it a little bigger and a little better looking. So I did a gold square with those little leafy bits on the corners just to add a little aesthetic. And then I'm doing a dark reddish purple for the outer border and inside. The uh, color scheme kind of reminded me of like a crown royal bag. But I think those two colors work really nicely together. And if I had a third regret, it was something I just thought about doing and totally forgot about when I started working on the background, was I thought about taking uh, the white again and just outlining both the characters. It maybe would have made it pop a little more. But, like I said, I just kind of completely forgot about it and started doing the purple, so... Oh well. And there it is, all tufted. All the tufting is complete, so now I'm busting out my Roberts 3095 carpet adhesive and just spreading it on. Bit by bit, just working it all in, making sure I have good, even coverage. Doing my patented technique I came up with myself. I don't know if anybody else does it, but I wet my hand and then I really just lather it in. I just want to make sure that every single fiber uh, is coated very well with glue so no nothing will pull out later. And I've never shown this before, so I wanted to show the aftermath of all the loose threads that fall away and they leave a big pile and here I am vacuuming it up trying to clean up a little bit. And so now it's the next day, taking it off the frame and cutting off the excess. Where I take it to my makeshift table, which is a washer and dryer, and I'm cutting it into nice bite-sized chunks that I can then start to hot glue and fold over, gluing them down. And I roll them over just a little bit so you can't see it from the top side and it gives it that nice waterfall edge. I've mentioned many times that I really don't like doing this part, but not to toot my own horn, but I think that's my best work yet and it's something that you'll never see. It just looks very neat on the underside. So now I've laid out my anti-slip backing material, cut it to the appropriate size, and we're spraying our spray adhesive on both pieces and pushing it down, and then just doing the same thing on the other side. I make sure I use a lot of spray adhesive. I want to make sure that that is never going to come off. And from that point we just trim off the excess and I go back through and make sure I got nice clean cuts so it looks very uniform and nice. And my girlfriend wanted to make a cameo up here and so there she is doing some tippy taps by the rug. That's it. And now we're on to flipping it back over and shaving it. It's like cutting the grass just row by row. Just taking off all the high spots making sure it's all nice and even. And this time I tried to go back through and carve out all the lines, make sure everything was looking real neat. And there you have it. That is a cult of the lamb rug. The lamb is giving his follower a bowl of poop 
to munch on and enjoy, and his follower, the little bunny rabbit, seems mighty happy about it, although he's probably gonna munch it down and then be sick and regret everything. But for now, forever instilled in this rug, there is a happy bunny rabbit receiving a nice bowl of poop. So I thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'd like to say thank you for 450 subscribers. Since my last video, the subscribers have more than doubled. So I thank you all so much. I'm glad to see that this channel is growing, and I hope we continue to expand. And I just want to get crazier and crazier with the kind of rugs that I'm making. So hey, if you like this kind of thing, join me here, and hopefully I'll keep getting a little better. So until next time, see ya!